If you've ever wanted to make a zero calorie simple syrup for use in cocktails, beverages, or diet soda, then you're in the right place. I've done all the math for you, so it's actually relatively simple. You just need to follow these instructions to get it done. And if you don't like the lingering flavor of high intensity sweeteners like sucralose, I have a solution for that too. And it was filed by Pepsi back in the 1990s. And these ingredients here are what we're gonna use, but I'll talk about those later in the video. So, so stick around for that because it's actually an important part and it does make a difference. So let me show you how to make a zero calorie sweetener using sucralose, allulose, and or erythritol. I'm Darcy O'Neill and this is Art of Drink. And one of the things is obviously low calorie lifestyle requires low calorie simple syrup, but it's not that easy to make unless you do the math and I'm making it really easy for you. All you need to do is follow these instructions and it will be basically the equivalent sweetness to regular simple syrup. Again, your mileage may vary based on your taste preferences, but today we're using sucralose and allulose. Uh, they have a synergistic combination where they taste more like sugar, but you can also substitute the allulose for erythritol. Now sucralose you can get for about $30 for 250 grams and 250 grams of sucralose equals about 150 kilos of table sugar or 300 plus pounds. So th this goes a long way. And allulose though, this 540 gram container here is about $20. Uh, sometimes you can find it for $15. It's a natural sugar. It's quite expensive right now because it's just becoming more popular. It will go down in price over time, but it's about 70% or 70 the sweetness of table sugar. So you can actually substitute erythritol for the allulose if you don't wanna put out the money. Erythritol is about half the price, sometimes even less, and it has the same sweetness as allulose, so 70% of that of table sugar. So what we're gonna make is a three to two simple syrup. That's the same sweetness that would be used in soda fountain beverages and the same sweetness when you measure this out as Coca-Cola but zero calories. We're gonna make a liter of it and you can use it the same way you use any simple syrup. If you need a two to one simple syrup or a one to one simple syrup, I'll put those recipes over on my Patreon page. I picked the middle ground one because I can't do all the different formulations in one video, It'd just take forever. So I picked the middle ground one in between the two. So if you're really serious about making syrups that are zero calorie, go check out my Patreon page. I put a lot of extra information on there so you can experiment and make something that's best for you. But this will get you started and this will work just as well in cocktails as it does in diet soda or even if you just wanna tip a little into your coffee. Let me show you how it's done. The first thing we need to do is measure out sucralose. Now, you need a balance that is good for two digits, so 0, 0.00 grams. You can usually get them online. They're about 30 to $40, maybe $50, but they are reasonably accurate. And you do wanna be reasonably accurate for this because of the high intensity nature of this makes moving 100 milligrams to the left or right uh, will change your formulation. But again, you don't have to be super accurate. You just need to be accurate enough. So we're gonna weigh out 1.2 grams of this into our beaker. So once you have that weighed out, we're going to take a larger beaker and we're gonna measure out 325 grams of allulose or erythritol. You can use either or in this formulation. So if I don't say erythritol, you can use it. We're looking at 325 grams. Typically you would add 225 grams of table sugar or sucrose. But because this is 70% the sweetness of sucrose, we have to add a little more. So we're gonna add 325 grams. And now that we have that, we just need to get it into our bottle. Now, obviously a funnel is the best way to do it. When you dump this in, you'll often find a lot of it sticks to the side. So the best thing to do is just rinse out your glassware. Sucralose dissolves quite easily. So you should be able to get it all out with just some good rinsing. Now this is a little bit harder to get in. Uh, you can dissolve this. If you're using allulose, it will dissolve quite easily. If you're using erythritol, this recipe, you'll find with erythritol that it doesn't have great solubility and it will crystallize into your formulation. This formulation here is designed so that the erythritol will not crystallize. So we're using it at about 32%. 
and erythritol has a solubility of about 38%. So we're nicely below that, so it should be fine. Obviously this is a lot of chunk, so I'm gonna get this into the bottle. It'll take me a minute, but you can actually dissolve it in a larger amount of water if you're using allulose. It won't work for erythritol. And if you wanna be really accurate, make sure you just rinse out your beakers and rinse your funnel. Now that you have this, what you want to do is add distilled water and you do not want to fill up your bottle yet. You just want to go to the about the 800 mil mark. Again, you can do it in a one liter beaker slash this is actually a coffee carafe and they're pretty accurate to one liter just below the pour spout. So you can make it in that and it'll be fine. I'm just doing it in this volumetric bottle so that you can actually see what's going on. YouTube is a visual medium. Now, the reason we don't fill this up at this point is we have a couple more steps to do before we finish off our syrup. And that includes adding a preservative, which we're gonna do next. And it's important because this does not have low acidity, nor is there the water activity. So the water activity is quite high in this. So in a typical two to one simple syrup, you have more sugar than water. In this, you have less sugar and more water, and that allows an environment for bacteria and mold to grow. But the next step will prevent that, and it's really simple. But just give that a good shake to get it started. What I wanna show you right now is how to preserve this, because again, all diet sodas and diet syrups are a little bit too light in the sugar to preserve themselves. Plus the pH of this is not low enough to prevent bacteria and molds. But this is not an optional step unless you're just making one liter at a time and storing it in their fridge and using it for a week or two. It will be fine with refrigeration. But if you're a bar or a restaurant or you just want to make like a case of this, put it on a shelf, this step is necessary. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this sodium benzoate solution. Now I've done a separate video not to complicate this video. This is I don't want too many steps in a video. So you can go check out how to make the sodium benzoate potassium sorbate solution. And what it is, is that you're going, for every milliliter of this, it's going to add 150 parts per million of sodium benzoate to a liter. So in this, there's 150 milligrams per mil. So one milliliter of this in one liter of your syrup is enough to preserve it. Get one mil and simply put it in there and get it all out. And now you have your 150 parts per million of sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate in your bottle. Now you just have to give that a shake. We'll do some more shaking in a second, but if you don't have a stir plate, this is the way you're gonna get everything into solution, the old fashioned way. Again, warm water will help. So now the next step is that we have to add a little acid to this. Sodium benzoate only works in a pH range of 2.5 to four. So we need to lock in the pH below four, and that's a very mild acidity, 2.5 is much stronger, but we can lock this in at a pH of 3.8 using a buffer, which is a chemistry term, but that's really simple. You don't even need a pH meter for this. All you need is some citric acid and some sodium citrate, and sodium citrate is just the salt of citric acid. And what you're gonna do is you're going to weigh out 1.29 grams of citric acid and 1.0 grams of sodium citrate, and you're going to add that to your syrup. So just like everything else, uh, turn on your balance, tear it, and weigh out 1.3 two nine grams of citric acid. So now if you get 1.3 or 1.28 grams, that's fine. This doesn't need to be accurate, as accurate as the sucralose. But again, you do wanna be fairly accurate. And as usual, always weigh into separate containers. So this is one gram of sodium citrate. And with those amounts, you're gonna get relatively close to your, basically it's gonna be between a pH of 3.5 and four. Dissolve it in a little bit of water. Give it a stir and then we just add it to there. It's just easier if you dissolve things in water uh, to get them in there. There's often static cling that prevents this stuff from fully getting in there. Water will solve that problem. And that's also why we don't fill that up to the top because if you need to do a couple rinse cycles, there's lots of room to work. We will fill it at the end. So once you get that in there, just give it a shake and you are effectively preserved. That is now shelf stable. If you wanted to stop at this point and not adjust for the sucralose sweetness or that lingering sweetness, you could happily put this on the shelf, fill it up to one liter 
and basically keep it at room temperature and you would be fine. You can also add some gum arabic. If it's for cocktails, you might want to add some gum arabic. The thickness of simple syrup does have a pleasant effect in cocktails. It's not so important for soda or necessarily putting a little bit into your coffee. But again, cocktails, just dissolve a little bit of this in water, like a teaspoon, add it to that. You can adjust as you see fit. I'm not gonna do it because I don't need it for this video. I don't wanna complicate things. But if you find the body of this a little bit thin, gum arabic or acacia gum will work fine. Now the last step is to put some magic ingredients uh, patented by Pepsi back in somewhere around 1990. And what they are is wine tannins. And you get these at any homebrew store. So this is just a generic one that I got at a homebrew store, kind of the cheapest one. And this is one I got from a winery supply company. I do have a, I am in the midst of planting a vineyard, a small one. So something I've been playing around with in the background. We will talk about the vineyard more in the summer. These are kind of expensive. These are kind of cheap. So this is $100 per kilo, but it's actually citrus wood tannins. So they add kind of a, a unique lemony flavor, at least that's what they talk about. But in our case, the flavor doesn't matter. We're using them at such a small amount, uh, 60 milligrams, that you probably won't detect the flavor of them. So you could use the cheap ones or the more expensive ones. If you need a supplier, uh, check out my Patreon page. I'll put links to all of the ingredients on there uh, where you can get them. But we're using these in such a small quantity, 60 milligrams for 1200 milligrams of sucralose. So the Pepsi patent basically says that for 200, for every 220 milligrams of sucralose you use, you need 10 milligrams of this to reduce the lingering flavor by 25 to 30%. So what happens is the tannins just kind of give your tongue something to think about and take your mind off the sucralose sweetness. And so it does cut it shorter and it makes it more pleasant. So one of the things about a lot of commercial products is they do a lot of research on these things and I'm hoping to bring it all to you so you can make things that are equal because often people make things at home or follow another YouTube video and they're like, it just doesn't come out as good as the stuff I buy commercially. Well, now it will. So it's really simple to do this. What we need to do is make a stock solution because you won't be able to weigh out accurately 60 milligrams on one of these balances. Uh, the error is just too high, but it doesn't matter if you go over uh, according to the patent, but 10 milligrams per 220 milligrams of sucralose is the maximum effect. But what you wanna do is you wanna take a 100 mil beaker. You're going to add two grams of your tannins now to this, you wanna add about 50 mils of distilled water. You do not wanna fill this up yet. And then what you wanna do is add 25 mils of propylene glycol. You can use ethanol, but I found that propylene glycol actually works really well. It helps get the tannins into solution better. And uh, this is an example of the other ones. They're a little hazy, maybe hard to tell on camera, but these ones are bright and clear. So I found the propylene glycol really helps with that. So it doesn't have to be accurate. You can be 20 mils or 30 mils, but it's a good option if you can't get alcohol or don't wanna use alcohol. Uh, propylene glycol actually I find works a little bit better. So again, just put in some of that. Don't fill this up with water yet because we wanna to stir to get everything dissolved. So turn that on and get it stirring. You can shake this in a bottle so you can transfer it to a bottle, but make sure you're only using 100 mils. Again, these kitchen uh, glassware things are pretty accurate to the 100 mil mark. So just don't go above 100 mils because otherwise your stock solution doesn't become accurate. If you wanna be really accurate, invest in a couple volumetric flasks and just fill exactly to the line. And that's your best option if you need to be accurate. But for this, you're not gonna taste the tannins you're just gonna, your body will just perceive the tannins and it'll reduce the sweetness. Now I've made uh, some solutions before using alcohol, water, and propylene glycol. So this one's got water. It's actually fairly hazy. And these ones are propylene glycol and alcohol and they come out fine, uh, mostly clear, but they are not shelf stable. So you actually add to, need to add preservative again to this. And for 100 mils, we just need to add two drops of our preservative solution. And I've already measured the pH of these with tannins and it comes out to about 3.5 or 3.6, uh, depending on which tannin we use. But 
they're within the pH range where you can just add two drops of this and they're preserved. You can keep them on the shelf and they won't degrade. But again, always use good judgment. If you see any formation of swirlies or fungus or just smells funny after a couple months, pitch it. Usually it's shelf stable, but again, just always check, common sense it. You know, everything, not everything lasts forever, even if it has preservatives. Now what you wanna do is stir this for, you know, five, 10 minutes. You'll find that it stays hazy. That's just air entrainment. So you have to turn off the stir to see that it's actually clearing up. So once this is dissolved, you're basically gonna take out the magnetic stirrer, if you're using a magnetic stirrer, and you're going to add distilled water to the 100 mil mark exactly. Again, accuracy does count for better products. So I just use, I'll just fill this up to the 100 mil mark and then I will transfer it to a bottle. And then once you have your bottle, all you do is take three mils of this and add it to one liter of this. And that will be your 10 parts per million of tannins for every 220 parts per million of sucralose. If you need to know about parts per million, I have a video on all that. It's in a soda fountain playlist. So check that out if you really don't know what's going on, but it's really easy. Three mils of this, you don't even need to know the numbers, will actually help make your sucralose less annoying. Now, once that's done, we just wanna to top up with distilled water to the 1000 mil mark. Now give it a shake. And as you can see, everything is dissolved. This is even using cold water, so it's pretty easy to get everything in solution. But there you have it. You have a zero calorie simple syrup that tastes pretty much like three to two simple syrup, same sweetness level. And you can use it in cocktails, diet sodas, you know, coffee, whatever you want. It's, and if you're going to make a soda flavor with it, Whenever I call for simple syrup in a soda flavor recipe, you just substitute this directly for the same amount of simple syrup. And that's it. That's how you make zero calorie simple syrup. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.